Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us. My name is Debbie and I'm on the creative design team at Sizzix and I absolutely love Eileen Hull's new card caddy. It's a great bigs die and I'm going to show you a fun little way to switch it up a little bit. I love a box. I love using any kind of heavy duty cardstock or any kind of medium to make something just a little different than it was originally planned. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I've created and just a fun little thing. This would be a great little gift that you could give to somebody. Put some note cards in here. I just created a few things with the same uh, die set and also it fits perfectly with any of your embossing folders, 3D embossing folders. It's a great gift. You could fill it up with some goodies, whether it's Sizzix, pens, pencils, markers, dies. What a great gift. Create the whole little caddy itself, wrap it up, and fill it with all sorts of goodness, and they will absolutely love it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera to the overhead to show you how you can create this fun little box. So if you're familiar with the die, it's a Biggs die, so that means it's a steel rule blade. If you can see the blades in here, What's great about Eileen's scoreboard dies is the blade is deep enough, long enough, I should say, for it to cut the material, mat board, chipboard, anything heavy. But then these blades right here, these are blades, but they're not as long, so they'll score the actual heavy duty stock. So I've card, I've covered our uh, media board with our card stock, so it'll cut through the material completely. So it will also score the area. So I just want to show you what I've done. So if you can see right here, these are where the scoreboard is actually just scoring it. It doesn't cut it all the way through. It just gives it enough so it'll actually be able to pleat it and you can fold it on the line. Same with right here. But then look at the beautiful cut that it's done along the edges. So that is media board covered with a heavy cardstock. I've also taken that one little piece that creates this sides to close up your whole box, but I've cut it three times so I can create a little area right here so I'm able to put little tools and um, accessories. I could put pins in there and what I've done in my project is I've taken the same material, the same die set that I used here, and I've actually cut it so it is around the pencil. Cardstock on the bottom and actually used it where it's able to um, embellish the pencil so it's a great little gift. So that's just a little added thing you can do. But my little trick is cutting this piece two times, I'm sorry, two times you need two times for it to be cut to create the actual caddy, but one more time just to give you that little divider in the center. So like I said, the big dies are steel rule blades. So what you'll need to do is since this is an XL die, you're going to be needing the XL cutting pads because as you know, the standard cutting pads are not long enough. And you wanna make sure the cutting pad has to be as long as the actual piece that you are cutting. Otherwise, there's no pressure right here, so it will not cut your um, material. So you definitely need to have the XL cutting pads for an XL die. All right, so let me get started. Our media board is six by 12. So what I did is I covered it with our, um, permanent adhesive sheets. Our adhesive sheets are six by six, so obviously I need two. So what I'm gonna do is peel off the backing so it's gonna create an adhesive. So this is already a sticker ready to go. What I could do if I didn't have this uh, media board com completely covered is I would um, cut this and then cut the media board and then lay it on top. But why have to cut it twice? It's perfect, you can go ahead and cut it all in one swoop. So let me go ahead and lay this down on there. So this is ready to go. It's all adhered down. I only needed this to adhere to the media board. This could also have the adhesive on it and just lay the paper on top. You don't need to put adhesive on both of these, just on to the um, cardstock is what I've done. So as you can see, since the paper is not as long as the uh, media board, I just wanna make sure that the area that is cutting this actual caddy right here, it is also going to be the part that is completely covered. If I went like this, this end of the um, caddy will not be the brown. So obviously I want the whole thing to be brown. So as long as the whole area that I need is completely covering the blade that's going to be cut, then I know I'm good to go. So cutting pad on the bottom and then another XL cutting pad on top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run it through. I'm using my Big Shot fold away. There's a lot of pressure, so I know it's gonna cut perfectly. And you can see that I cut through both pieces. Just a good rule to remember is you wanna make sure that your um, 
good side of your paper is against the blade. It's a good rule of thumb to remember just for, um, especially uh, messages or sentiments or a name. And see how it cut this beautifully? And then this part didn't cut, it just scored it. I mean, how amazing is that? Makes a great little book as well. So that's a fun, this is, here you go. Got it already, good to go. It also cut the So since the media board is 12 inches, the area that I had laid the uh, cardstock down since it wasn't long enough, it did not cover that one area. So this piece, I have another piece that I adhered the brown cardstock to, just a smaller part, because like I said, I need to cut three of those completely. So I'm going to go ahead, trim this down. And now, same thing, cutting pad on the bottom. And I'm just gonna make sure that I have my brown media board completely covering that one panel there. I need to cut three, so there's one. Now, it, usually, big dies can cut more than one piece at a time, but media board, it's strong. You can't cut two pieces of that. So I'm gonna do one now. I'm gonna go back just because it's a shorter distance. So since the piece was long enough, I cut the label and the side panel. And I have another piece. So you want to make sure, cut it again. Now if you didn't want to have that little divider in the middle, the one I have in my project for the pencil, you could just do the two. That's what this is intended for, cutting two of these side panels to create the walls of your um, patty. Now, I'm gonna use this for another time because I use a larger um, banner piece that I'm gonna show you in a second. So you actually need three of these. I have them already cut and ready, so I have an additional one because I figured you don't need to watch me do another one. And then, so that's it for the caddy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the label. Now, if you remember in my caddy itself, I have this larger label. This is the size that comes with your uh, Biggs die set. So I wanted the larger size just because I thought, it, I like the way it looked on this particular project. So I'm using our Banners and Labels Biggs die set. There's four different labels to use. I'm gonna choose the larger one. Same idea, I covered our belly slipper cardstock over the media board. I'm gonna make sure it's lay, laying right on top of the area that I need to cut. I don't need to cut all of those sizes just because I only need that one in particular. So I could use my XL cutting pads, but the shorter the cutting pad, as long as it's covering your die blade area, the shorter time you need to run your machine through. So I'm just gonna do it. If I had the longer cutting pad, I would have had to keep going and going and going. So there's that, all set and ready to go. Now I'm going to do my final die cutting, and that is using the Skinny Mini Elements. It's a very intricate die set, and this is the area that lays perfectly over um, any of your projects. It's a great shape, it's a great size, and the detail is amazing. Now remember, since this is a thinlet, I'm gonna have to be using my adapter pad and my platform, and it shows you right on there. Thinlet tells you the exact levels that you need to do your sandwiching, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So what I've done here is, I've already done um, the adhesive on the back of this one. So what I wanna do is I wanna create, if you can tell, this is a little bit shorter than what I need since I wanna cover this front area completely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this. I wanna position it to make sure the whole area is completely covering the um, cardstock and I'm gonna cut it all the way. Now, if you know, I mean, if you could tell, there's no blade around here, so it's not gonna cut out a full panel. If it did, I could piece it together to cover that entire caddy. But I'm just gonna go ahead, lay that down on there. I don't need my maker's tape because I can tell it's gonna stay put. Fingers crossed, right? <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and put my cutting pad on top there, and then I'm gonna run it through. Don't worry about the crackling, it's just letting me know that it's cutting 
it through with the adhesive on the back, you just want to make sure. So that's why I did it twice. And you could tell that it cut through perfectly. So with my uh, dye brush, I got all these beautiful pieces and this would be fun to use for another project. I don't want to bore you with me creating something with all those little stars, but remember in the crafting world, you don't want to throw away your trash. Get all these little pieces out. If any stubborn pieces are still in there, I could use my die pick, but look how beautifully that cut. Peel that off. Now see how this is beautiful, ready to go? Well, I also need to make it a little bit longer. So I'm going to lay this on here and I just want to match it up to exactly where it last cut, because since this is a completely even um, die set, I'm going to, I'm able to tell that this will match up perfectly. And just to be sure, like if I went like this, see how it's off a little bit, it'll chew up the area. So just as closely as you can, try to make sure it's on there perfectly. Okay. So this is when I will use my maker's tape because this is one thing I do not want it to slip. And it did just a little bit. So let me get my maker's tape. This is our low tack adhesive. It'll lay down on your material and it will not ruin it at all. So let's just make sure this didn't mess up. Just got that right on there. This just extends the design so you can make it as long as you want it to be. One more piece to be sure. And when I peel it off, it's not going to ruin my ballet slipper cardstock. Now remember, the thinlet cannot cut through mat board because it can only cut thinner, uh, it can th cut cardstock thinner other materials, but not mat board. So I'm going to go ahead. And I know it cut the area that I'd already cut. And it just extends the design across that cardstock. How great is that? I'm just going to pop out all those pieces. See how this area looks slipped a little bit, but that's okay. That could be at the, um, at the top or uh, at the bottom. Because I don't need this entire area. So instead of you watching me take out all these little pieces, I have a part piece that's already cut. And another idea that I've done, I wanted to try this earlier, is the same idea, but I did it long and narrow. Put another piece of cardstock behind that and add it to a solid piece behind it. And it could be an napkin ring or anything. I just love extending it a little bit so your design can be a little bit bigger. All right, so I believe that is all the die cutting I need. Now it's time to start the fun assembly. So here's the piece that we already cut. Now remember, this is the project. Let me clean up this mess here. This is the project here. I have the design all on there. And then I'm going to show you how I created this part. So what I've previously done is I've added an adhesive, a strong red tape adhesive to the three panels that I'm going to be using here. Just because I know that it'll stay strong, you could use, if you have any kind of heavy duty adhesive, works perfectly also. But I know for sure that this stay pit put. And also, you could use a glue gun too. So I'm going to go ahead and just position it, making sure it's all going to fit. But what I want to do first is I want to lay down my piece here. So actually, there is one more piece I needed to die cut. I need to die cut the panel to fit on there. So since I am going to just use a smaller portion of the big die, because remember, it's going to lay on across this or right around the same edges. So I need to actually cut this one more time just on the top panel. So let me put this machine back. And this little edge here, it's kind of the center. It has that little um, bump at the top. That's the part that I want to be in the center. So I'm going to lay this on top here like this and make sure that's centered. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And that's the only area I want to have cut. So it's okay that the whole area is not completely covered. And since it's a smaller area, I don't need to use my full XL cutting pad. I'm just going to have the smaller one on top. And of course, it moved while I was doing it. So let me get that 
positioned again. And as long as the cutting pad is covering the area that needs to be cut, I know I'm good to go. So see how perfectly that cut? Okay. Now, I'm pretty sure that's all I need to die cut. So I'm going to go ahead, lay that down there on that. And this is the part that I want to trim. So I'm going to trim it right there on the edge. I could have positioned the straight edge against that uh, part down there, but that's okay because it'll be the bottom. Now I'm going to peel this off. This had the adhesive backing on it, remember? So that's perfect. It's ready to be a sticker. You could use um, glue, but that would be a lot of fussing. Okay, let me position this over the area. And that's good to go. Now I'm going to make sure and trim this off on the edge. The overhang that I didn't cut evenly. Happens to the best of us, right? When Eileen comes out with a box, I love playing with it. There's so many fun different things you could do to create this um, with her box dies, her album dies. This would also, like I'd said earlier, be a fun little album too. So that's all ready. What I could do if I wanted is run it through the machine one more time just for the pressure to make sure this is um, adhered down. So that's just a little thing you could do. You don't need to watch me do that, but that's just a, another uh, tip that you could uh, use. Okay, so go ahead, peel off the adhesive backing. I need my die pick. Peel off the adhesive backing of these red, this red line tape. Just make sure it's a strong tape because you don't want, especially if you're giving it to somebody or if you have it on your desk, you don't want it to in time start pulling away. So what I want to do is I want to do the um, sides first and then decide where I want my center piece to be. So since this is going to be flush right up against the, you can see your score line there, that'll be at the bottom. And you want it to be positioned perfectly right there along the sides. Everybody has their own little ways of assembling the boxes. This is the way I think is um, easiest for me to figure out to make sure it's all evened up. So peel off the backing on all of these. Static from this tape seems to cling a little longer than you would think. Same thing, bring it to the top because you know it's going to match up perfectly our designers know exactly what they're doing when they do these cute little boxes. Okay, so that's ready to go. And you can go ahead and close it up now if you want, or you can decide your center um, divider. So I'm just going to just eyeball where I want that to, to go. And like I said, you don't need the divider. This is just a little fun little tip with this project. If you don't use the divider, the your obviously your space in the center is um, bigger. So like I said, you could put larger note cards in there. You could put um, your embossing folders and just create your label that says what's inside. If it's somebody's name and you're giving it as a gift, that's a fun little thing to personalize it as well. Everybody loves something with their name on it, right? Okay, so I think I want it to be about this side. Make sure that the little tabs are flush up against the score line in there. Close that up. with me there. Put that in there evenly. For this side. And 
And there you have it. Got your little dividers in there. You can put your tools in there. All sorts of things could fill up. And the one last thing that we want to add, don't forget, is we're going to add the label. So the label, like I said earlier, how fun would it be to give somebody a gift and put their name on it? And they'll keep it because, you know, everybody loves something that's handmade. So one of the favorite things that I like to do when I'm personalizing something, just to make sure I'm not going to do it crooked or um, off center, is I like to already peel off the adhesive backing. So I die cut this out of our hand-drawn alphabet, the um, name Anna. And then I'm just going to go ahead and lay it down there. If I put it off to the side, then if I lay down, which is something that would usually happen to me, put down all the letters and realize oh, it's off a little bit, just do it on a piece of cardstock. You know it's even. You can just position it where you want it to be. And go ahead and lay that down. And then I just press down the top of it, hold it, and then bring this forward. And, of course, one got a little out of control. But look, the majority of them are down. <laughs> Go ahead and lay that one down there. And then any kind of adhesive. I could use glue. I could use cardstock. I mean cardstock. Adhesive roller, which I just used. And how cute is this? Positioned it right there on the center. And now I have something to give to my friend Anna. <laughs> but just fill it up with a few cards. So let me just show you really quickly what I had done with the cards. So Eileen also has um, the uh, woven leather, leather, woven leather 3D embossing folder. Beautiful. I did this slimline card, put that in there, die cut it with the label that came with the actual um, big die. I did a narrower piece of the um, mini elements thinlet intricate die set laid that on top of a piece of white cardstock. That's another tiny little narrow card. And then this excess pieces. You don't want to throw out your trash, my friends. And just go ahead, quick little with the emboss with the um, opulent silver uh, cardstock in the same colors. And just, she's ready to send me a thank you note. <laughs> Got her pencil and everything. So it's a great project. It's a lot of fun. And I had a blast coming up with it. So quick, head out and make sure you get your Eileen Hole Chapter 3 card caddy. Whether you're making one for your friend or one for yourself, it's a great project full of all sorts of ideas that you can do to create, whether it's for your desktop or just something to give away. I absolutely love it, and I can't wait to come up with some more ideas to create with it. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you again next time.